Good Tuesday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Here are a few of the stories we have coming up for you tonight. The Wenatchee Valley's largest low-cost medical system is past a hurdle to retain its federal certification. East Wenatchee residents are invited to the launch of a new open-air wellness court tomorrow. Unseasonably hot temperatures through Thursday before we cool down Friday with rain and thunderstorms likely. Firefighters in the Medhow Valley had to contain a controlled burn that grew beyond its bounds last night. Stations in Twisp and Winthrop responded about 7.45 p.m. to Twisp Airport Road, just northwest of the Twisp Municipal Airport itself, and found the fire had spread to about 100 square feet in tall grass. First responders knocked the fire down, and the State Department of Natural Resources made sure there was a fine line dug around the perimeter. Okanagan County Fire District 6 says the work was complete in less than two hours. A Wenatchee man has been missing now for a month and a half, and police are seeking public help in the search. 38-year-old Travis Coleman went missing in the Wenatchee foothills on April 22nd, and multiple volunteer searches of the canyon areas have no results. Coleman's family said he was suffering from confusion when he left on foot from his home near Castle Rock and Number 2 Canyon. One search about three weeks afterward found Coleman's bags and personal items near Butler Ridge. He's now officially listed as a missing person. If you have information that might help find Travis Coleman, call the Wenatchee Police Department at 663-9911. A North Central Washington lawmaker is asking for clarity on the state's new prohibitions on assault weapons. 7th District Senator Shelley Short was one of the Republican votes against HB 1240, which outlawed the manufacture, import, and sale of semi-automatic rifles that met state definitions for an assault weapon. Recently, Short submitted a formal request for an opinion from the Attorney General's office asking whether rimfire rifles are exempt from that ban. 22 caliber rimfire ammunition is the most common type in the world, but it's not specifically mentioned for exclusion in the new law. The Attorney General's office says it's looking over Short's request and issued a notice today asking for public comment on how its opinion should be framed. Short's district includes Okanagan, Douglas, and part of Grant County. The Wenatchee Valley's largest low-cost medical system has passed a hurdle to retain its federal certification. Columbia Valley Community Health says an on-site assessment by the Federal Health Resources and Services Administration found no deficiencies in its services. Keep its health nonprofit status, CVCH must go through a full review process with the HRSA every three years, including top-to-bottom inspections of its offices and clinics. CVCH provides medical, dental, behavioral health, and other supporting services throughout Chelan and Douglas counties. It's nearing full completion of a new clinical center in East Wenatchee. When we come back, a new program has been introduced in the Quincy School District to help students pursue a path to a career in IT. A Catholic priest who formerly served churches in Leavenworth, Kashmir, and Moses Lake has been elevated to the rank of Auxiliary Bishop. And East Wenatchee residents are invited to the launch of a new open-air wellness court tomorrow. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Are you hungry enough to eat the sand out of a rhinoceros? I know how you feel. Come on out to Blueberry Hills, you'll have a great time. We've got excellent food, a feed on the furniture kind of experience, and we won't hustle you out of your table. If you want a real farm experience, make the trek to Manson to Blueberry Hills, where you sit, you pick, you eat, and you visit. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson, it's where the world is coming to. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. 
Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. Merry Mates can clean your entire home, business, or vacation rental from top to bottom, inside and out. Merry Maids will even take care of cleaning your carpets and they can pressure wash your home. Merry Maids has thousands of happy customers. They've been cleaning homes and businesses in our valley for over 25 years. Check out their glowing reviews at MerryMaidsOfWenatchee.com and call the cleaning experts, Merry Maids, to get your free estimate. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. So relax, it's done. Celebrate the class of 2023 with the NCW Life Channel. Join us Wednesday, June 14th for Westside High School's commencement exercises live from Westside High at 7 p.m. Coverage is brought to you by Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista, Together for Youth, the Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center, The Walkabout Grill, Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington, Caldwell Banker Cascade, Dr. David Parks, and Global Car Care. A new program has been introduced in the Quincy School District to help students pursue a path to a career in IT. The Data Center Technician Career Launch Program enables Quincy High School students to complete their first year of a two-year program while still in high school and then transition to Big Bend Community College. The students in the program will then participate in a paid internship at one of the data centers in Grant County and become competitive candidates for positions as data center technicians or IT administrators. The program received the final endorsement from the State Board of Community and Technical Colleges in April. The first cohort of 13 students enrolled in the program in the fall of 2022. A Catholic priest who formerly served churches in Leavenworth, Kashmir, and Moses Lake has been elevated to the rank of Auxiliary Bishop. 53-year-old Father Felipe Polito was selected today by Pope Francis to serve that role in the Diocese of San Diego, California. In the Yakima Diocese, which encompasses most of central Washington, Polito was Vicar of Our Lady of Fatima Parish in Moses Lake from 2003 to 2006 and then spent two and a half years at parishes in Leavenworth and Kashmir. He then returned to Moses Lake as pastor for four more years before taking his current church assignment in Kennewick. Bishop Joseph Tyson says Polito is the first priest of the Yakima Diocese to be named a bishop since the diocese was formed in 1951. East Wenatchee residents are invited to the launch of a new open-air wellness court tomorrow, the Fitness Court, which is part of a nationwide initiative launched by National Fitness Campaigns, consists of seven stations for a body weight only workout. The court also offers a free app to help guide your workouts and is now one of over 150 locations across the country. The East Mott Metropolitan Park District was awarded $30,000 by the campaign and a city match and local sponsorships from the city of East Wenatchee. Northern Fruit and Rotary of East Wenatchee helped fund that project. Those interested in attending can meet at the Fitness Court at Eastmont Community Park tomorrow, June 7th at 4 p.m. Coming up next, it's the start of chip sealing season around the Wenatchee Valley, and that very necessary road maintenance has been known to lead to some frustration among motorists. Unseasonably hot temperatures through Thursday, then cooler with rain and thunderstorms Thursday night and Friday. All of all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. That and much more still to come tonight. Please stay with us. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. DA Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at DA Davidson help chart your retirement future today.
shoot. I think I left my keys in the kitchen. Can you grab them? Yep. Find them? What's this? It's a locking bag. It keeps Grandma's medication safe. But I could just take it. Well, for one thing, it locks. And if it were gone, I know there's a problem. Huh. Well played. Help prevent opioid misuse before it starts. Visit GetTheFactsRx.com. Celebrate the class of 2023 with the NCW Life Channel. Join us Friday, June 9th for Wenatchee High School's commencement exercises live from Lee Bofta Field at the Apple Bowl starting at 8 p.m. Coverage is brought to you by Apple Valley Honda, Confluence Health, JDSA Law, Merry Maids, and Mini Blinds and more. Celebrate the class of 2023 with the NCW Life Channel. In tonight's feature story, it's the start of chip sealing season around the Wenatchee Valley, and that very necessary road maintenance has been known to lead to some frustration among motorists. Keith Newberry is the foreman for the Wenatchee District of the Chelan County Public Works Department. On the Chelan County Connection podcast, Newberry says the work has already begun in earnest and drivers should prepare for when they encounter a crew hard at work. Uh, chip sealing is an application of hot oil and followed by a, the application of a 3 8 rock and then rolled in with the rollers following that. Um, it's a surface treatment. And we do it, uh, we try to get all of our roads done in a seven to 10 year period throughout Chelan County. Uh, it's less expensive. And obviously we don't have the funding to put brand new asphalt out for all of our roads. Uh, we follow a pavement management system. Uh, the, the county roads are rated every two years. And uh, it gives us feedback on the pavement condition and how many years since it's been last preserved. That all goes into a, a software system, which is a decision tree that comes out and gives us the roads that are in need that year. Chip sales best done in the heat of the summer. So we're, we're going to start June 5th and our goal is to be completed by July 15th. The reason being is that we need so many days of cure time with the hotter weather, weather, excuse me, before moving into fall and winter. We have five districts in Chelan County. Uh, we will draw people from all five districts. We'll approximately have 21 employees and 17 to 20 pieces of equipment on the job site. Uh, we use two distributors that uh, apply the hot oil, followed by a, a chip box that drops the uh, 3 8 rock. We will have 10 to 12 dump trucks bringing rock to the chip box, followed by four rubber tire rollers rolling and mending that rock into the oil. We work from 6 to 4.30, Monday through Thursday. And then when we get into the triple digits in the, in the middle of the heat, uh, we'll start work at 5 a.m. just to get the guys out off the road earlier in the afternoon. We're going to be doing all of downtown Manson, uh, upper end of Indiana River Road, and then the north end of the Wenatchee area in the Sunny Slope District. Uh, all of our roads are uh, on the Public Works website if anyone wants to go there to, to see maybe if their neighborhood's involved. Uh, you'll see uh, flaggers at each end of the job site. We never usually run any kind of detour. It's always flagger controlled traffic. Sometimes on higher speed roads, we'll in install a uh, pilot car and just, you know, plan for minor traffic delays or use alternate routes when the crew is in your area. We'll be spending about $1.7 million. Uh, that includes the chip seal. And then we will be doing some pre-level work for roads that are going to be chip sealed next year. Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope your Tuesday was a good one. Another hot one out there, a lot like yesterday, and it's getting dry out there, folks. This is our shot from the Billy Goat SkyFi Tower camera up north in Okanagan County. There's the town of Pateras Brewster back here, and look at the foothills of the Cascades. Already very brown, yellowish looking, and we were just talking, Malcolm and I, it wasn't too long ago, that was green when we used this shot. So boy, we are an inch behind moisture and we could really use the rain and heck it could be coming. Not so much in the next couple of days. It is going to be even hotter tomorrow with temperatures in the mid 90s. But for us here in the Wenatchee Valley by Thursday night, we do have about a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms and an even better chance on Friday. We will really cool down Friday and into the weekend too. And we'll have more on that coming up in a little bit. 
bit. But as I mentioned, it was a hot one out there today. 89 unofficially at Pangborn Airport. 13 degrees above where we should be for this time of year, but not close to our record. And it wasn't that long ago. Second day in a row now for 2016 for our record high year. Last year, or I should say 2016, 101 on this date. 57 this morning, 53 is normal, and 44 is our record low, and that was set in 2005. Sunrise, 506 this morning, and the sun set tonight, will set tonight at 854. All right, let's take a look at those scorching hot Wednesday temperatures. One of the hottest temperatures that we've seen so far this year. 96s in Moses Lake and Afreda. 95 in Quincy tomorrow, 94 for Wenatchee, any at 93. Chelan, you're going to see a hot one at 94. And even Lake Wenatchee, a lot cooler normally, 88 degrees tomorrow. So you know we're going to warm up. Tonight, it's going to stay very mild ahead of a building ridge that's just off the Pacific or off the West Coast out in the Pacific. Clear skies tonight and mild. We're going to see low temperatures in those lower 60s, so about 6 to 7 degrees warmer than we've seen recently anyway with those clear skies. On Wednesday, yeah, sunny and hot. Boy, take a lot of water with you if you're going to be outside tomorrow or get an air conditioning, a better idea. Mid-90s for highs. We could see 100 down in the Tri-Cities for high temperatures tomorrow. On Thursday, partly cloudy. We are beginning to see some more clouds move up from a big area of low pressure to our south, and that could kick off some thunderstorm activity Thursday night. It could last throughout our evening hours. Still going to be hot, low 90s for Thursday. This is our best chance for rain on Friday. Cloudy skies, thunderstorms, the heaviest just to our east, but boy, this is your morning commute at 8 a.m., and those storms Storms are going to move slowly from the south and we could pick up some pretty good rain in some locations on Friday. Partly cloudy then for Saturday, maybe a leftover shower or two. We will begin a slow warm up on Saturday too. We'll jump back into those low 80s for high temperatures. There's that ridge of high pressure once again building over the Pacific Northwest. By the end of the weekend on Sunday, that's where we'll really begin to warm up. Mostly sunny and warmer. We'll get back into those upper 80s. And then by the end of our forecast on Monday, sunny and downright hot once again as a double area of high pressure is off the coastline. High temperatures on Monday in the lower 90s. Let's take a look now at your seven-day forecast. Very mild overnight lows the next couple of nights. 63 tonight, 94 our high temperature tomorrow, and not much relief tomorrow night with 67 our overnight low. Another hot one for Thursday at 91. Showers beginning to develop overnight on Thursday, and then a cool down with rain likely on Friday. High temperature of 79 before we begin to warm right back up. Saturday, 82. Sunday, 82. 88, and then sunshine as we get to our next work week with a high temperature of 91. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. Castle Rock International is the Northwest premier real estate agency for large acreage properties, farms and ranch land, lodging and resorts, and other distinctive commercial real estate. Professional, knowledgeable, and discreet, Castle Rock International has the listings and the buyers you have been looking for. Contact John McNamara at Castle Rock International today or visit their website for more information on this award-winning company. I had had a seizure in the middle of the night and they rushed me to the hospital and decided um, to induce labor to try to get the baby out at the outpouring of love and support I got from Confluence Health. My coworkers coming to the ICU to be with me. For me, it's the work family. It's just incredible to have support no matter what I'm going through in my personal life, my, my own health.
Pitch to the plate on an 0-2 swing. Wenatchee Apple Sox baseball is back on the NCW Live channel. Join us Tuesday, June 6, as the Apple Sox host the Springfield Drifters at 6.30. Coverage is brought to you by Apple Valley Honda, Confluence Health, JDSA Law, Mary Mays, Mini Blinds and More, Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista, Together for Youth, Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center, and Walkabout Grill. Your television home for Apple Sox baseball is the NCW Life Channel. Before the ta- Well, the Wenatchee Apple Sox are off to a 3-0 start for the fifth time in franchise history as they celebrate opening night here at home here at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium against the Springfield Drifters. Joel Norman joined us on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley to talk with Dan Koontz about oh, the success from last year and how they hope to build on that this year when they made it all the way to the North Division semifinals. You know, last year it started off a little bit rough. Like you mentioned, a 12-15 and 15 start. The team really righted the ship from there, though. Went 15-12, and 12, won the second half North Division title. And like you said, we were right there. There with Bellingham. That was a great baseball game. Could have gone either way. Just went the Bells way and they moved on. But, you know, the goal for this team this year, I think it's no secret, something that head coach Mitch Darlington has been talking about, it's to win the first half. That's tough. The start of this season, this Apple Sox team is going to have a lot of 10-day contracts playing in the field. So these are guys at the plate who you might see that first homestand. You might not see them the second one, though. So these are guys who we're really counting on early on this first nine games or so of the season to really make an impact and help this team win some games. Norman says head coach Mitch Darlington brought a bunch of veterans back again to help lead this team. Garrett Gores is a returning player. He started on opening day. Quincy Vassers, I think he's going to get this home opener start for us here tonight. You know, there's a lot of guys coming back who we're putting in these big spots and we're saying, hey, you've earned this. Now go out and continue to show the new guys what we're all about here. So it, it's so fun seeing them come back and their enthusiasm. Just just going into the, the locker room on the first day to talk with a couple of guys. It was, it was so cool to see guys from a year ago. And it wasn't just good to see them. It was good to see how excited they were to be back. We talk about this each year, Dan. Guys come in sometimes and they're first summer in Wenatchee and you're a little tepid. You're not really sure what to expect. It's a different town maybe for some of them from where they're from. At the end of the summer, they're in tears when they're leaving because they miss this place. They know they're going to miss this place. They don't know if they're going to get back, but they know they've made some incredible memories and lifelong bonds here as well. Early season summer collegiate baseball is a little bit unique where you have players that are still playing with their colleges and won't be here for a couple of weeks. And Norman says that's a chance for some of these temporary players to earn themselves a spot full time. Easton Amundsen is a guy who can play first base, third base, and the outfield. Just won an NWAC championship at Lower Columbia. We signed him on a 10-day contract. Would not be surprised if that guy sticks around even longer. Led the NWAC in home runs this year. You, you got to want to have that guy in your lineup as well. So I imagine he may be able to work himself into a, a space on this team. Uh, Fred Buxton is a guy who's a middle infielder from Vanguard. He's wearing Joichiro Oyama's old number, so fans will get used to seeing him either at short or second wearing that number. Right-handed hitter, but boy, he's got some pop too. He led Vanguard, a college in California, led them in home runs this year. Great uh, great player who Quincy Vassar helped us bring to the team. And there's, there's so many other guys who can make such an impact. You know, these position players we're talking about, these are going to be the guys who early on, we're really going to rely on them to carry the load offensively because because we're a little thin there until the full-time contract players get in. But some of these guys have great opportunities to really earn their role on this team and maybe last the whole summer with the Apple Sox. It's the 3-0 Apple Sox taking on the 3-0 Springfield Drifters here at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. We'll have that live here on the NCW Life Channel with our first of six broadcasts here this summer. And that's coming up here at 6.30, so be sure and stay tuned for that. West Coast League play last night. Ben put up crooked numbers early in a 17-5 win over Port Angeles. Ryan Christensen led the way for the Elks, going 3-for-6 with a 3-run home run and 5 RBI. Jack Johnson was 3-for-5 with 3 runs and 2 RBI to lead Victoria over Walla Walla 8-3. The Harbor Cats are off to a 4-0 start. Ridgefield couldn't hold on to an early lead and fell to Redmond in non-league action by a final of 6-4. Let's take a look. I know it's early on, but let's take a look at the standing so far as we're through one full weekend of West Coast League baseball. In the north standings, Victoria leads the north with a 4-0 mark. Wenatchee, Bellingham, and Nanaimo off the 3-0 starts. Kelowna's 1-2, while Edmonton, Kamloops, and Port Angeles still looking for their first win. In the WCL South, Springfield and Corvallis are off to 3-0 starts. Then you have Yakima Valley and Portland at 2-1. Cowlitz is 1-2, while Bend is 1-3. Ridgefield and Walla Walla still winless on the start to their summer campaign. 
Well, the Mariners are hoping a travel day yesterday helped right the ship as they're in San Diego to take on the Padres in the first of just a quick two game series. Uh, Mariners have lost five of their last six, including being swept by Texas over the weekend. Uh, the first pitch tonight coming up at 640 will be Logan Gilbert to try to stop the bleeding for the Mariners, and he'll go up against Joe Musgrove that uh, game coming up at uh, Petco Park on Route Sports Northwest. While the Mariners and Angels had the day off Monday, everyone else in the American League West was playing. Oakland gave way away a lead in the game. With a two bases loaded walks and a sack fly in the three-run sixth inning, they fell to Pittsburgh 5-4. Jake Myers had four hits, including a two-run home run as Houston blasted Toronto 11-4. Yanir Diaz also had a four hit game for the Astros. Nathaniel Lowe walked off for Texas in a 4 3 win over St. Louis Monday. Lowe's RBI single in the bottom of the ninth gave the Rangers their 39th win on the season against 20 losses. Mariners are now 10 games behind Texas in the American League West standings. Well, the Seahawks are down this week after wrapping up OTAs last week, and then they've got a mandatory mini camp coming up next week. Coach Pete Carroll met with the media last week, uh, end of the last week, to talk about the OTAs and uh, some of the rookies coming in and blending with free agents they acquired in the offseason. We're going. We're rocking along here. This, uh, the tempo of our, of our days and stacking good days after good days has been a good, it's been a good sign for us. We're on the move. And... Uh, Things feel like um, like we're making progress. We're getting to see the young guys and, and getting them plenty of turns to start gathering information, and um, they seem to be assimilating well. Um, some of the, the free agent guys also, and uh, so everything's really on the ups right now. So we're really happy about what's happening. I got a couple guys we're waiting to get back and uh, injury-wise, but other than that, we're in pretty good shape. Second year cornerback Tariq Woolen suffered a knee injury and Coach Carroll updated everybody on his progression. He did have to have surgery on that torn cartilage. It was really an unusual occurrence. I mean, he, he didn't have a like a play where he got hurt. He was in between plays, getting ready to go get lined up and he felt something, you know, and, and, and it wasn't bad. And then, then uh, before the play started, he, he, you know, he sat down, you know, and he felt his knee was, was something was wrong. And uh, fortunately, um, everything went great. If you see him, he's getting around terrific already. Um, it's a you know hopefully a four to six week type of the deal and and uh, his attitude has been great. He never really accepted it when it happened and, and just you know it was such a weird occurrence that um, he just took it in stride and has been really positive about it. So we see nothing but uh, uh, we should be able to get him back soon. Kenneth Walker the third had a fantastic rookie season last year. He rushed for 1,050 yards, had nine touchdowns, and Coach Carroll says his off-season workout has put him in a position to be successful again in his second season. He's worked so hard with the receivers, and 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 uh, I mean he's worked full speed day after day after day. Um, his confidence, his his explosiveness, his quickness, uh, his ability to, to run the routes and catch the ball. Um, he just he's doing everything he can possibly. He's catching punts. He's catching kickoffs. He wants, he's doing everything he can possibly do, and he's having a blast. And uh, his attitude and spirit <clears throat> is just you know uh, such a great compliment to coming off the season that he had. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad we've got a lot of guys at the spot. You know, we're not going to overuse him in, in, in the early part of the uh, in preseason and all of that. But uh, he's ready to go, and uh, he's had as good an offseason as you could have. The Seahawks are off again this week. They'll have a mini camp coming up next week in Renton. With NCW Life Channel Sports, I'm Eric Grandstrom. I hope you have a happy Tuesday. And maybe join us out here at the ballpark. On the next edition of Wake Up Financial Valley, we wrap up our three-part series on getting people alive when the ticker goes south. We talked to Dr. Joe. We showed about CPR. We're going to show you how an AED works, and we're going to let you know how you can get more information with Jonah and Austin and a dummy, <laughs> me, on the next edition of Wake Up Financial Valley. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks so much for being with us and have a great night.